Many of us have already heard about the asteroid belt, the region of asteroids and other small bodies between Mars and Jupiter. It's well known because of its location in the middle of the solar system, the fact that asteroids in general are extremely notorious, and the fact that at the asteroids there are supposedly so tight you can barely navigate a spaceship, which actually isn't true at all. But what if I told you that there was a far larger and more massive region of space that has very similar objects and stretches way past the orbit of Neptune? That is the Kuiper Belt, the region of space where the majority of our comets come from. Now, before we head out into the far reaches of our solar system, I would appreciate you would like the video, subscribe to your channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Okay, so what exactly is the Kuiper Belt, and why is it so interesting? Well, the Kuiper Belt is very similar to the Asteroid Belt in that it's composed of very small chunks of rock, many of which are less than a mile in diameter. However, the Kuiper Belt is also extremely far from the Sun. Its innermost edge is about 30 astronomical units, which is past Neptune's orbit. For reference, an astronomical unit is equivalent to 93 million miles, which is the same as Earth's distance from the Sun. This huge distance from the Sun means that the asteroids found here are not made of rock, rock and metal like the asteroids closer to the Sun are, but rather of ices like methane, ammonia, and water. This means that whenever an object is sent from this icy coal perch towards the Sun, these ices will melt off, which combined with velocity and solar wind produces that spectacular tail we see in comets. Fun fact, the solar wind means that instead of the tail trailing the comet itself, it will instead always point away from the sun. Some of the most no notable recurring comets we see, including Halley's Comet, originate in the Kuiper Belt. Now, Earth gets its fair share of comets gracing the sky, and while the majority of them come from the Oort cloud that's even further from the sun, there is no question that the Kuiper Belt is a major comet producer as well. This can be attributed to the fact that the belt is huge. 20 times wider and 200 times more massive than the more famous asteroid belt. However, the extreme distance from the sun, the large size of the belt, and the fact that there aren't a ton of huge things out there means that there is relatively little chance of a Kuiper belt object being the cause of a mass extinction on Earth. However, the Kuiper belt isn't all tiny pieces of ice. In fact, there are several objects big enough to be classified as dwarf planets. The most well-known of them is Pluto which was demoted to a dwarf planet in 2006. The reason why actually has to do with the Kuiper Belt. It was determined that since Pluto's gravity wasn't strong enough to clear its orbit of the millions of smaller chunks of ice in its path, it could no longer be a planet. However, Pluto isn't the only dwarf planet out there. In fact, it's not even the biggest one. That honor goes to Eris, a dwarf planet that orbits between 40 and 100 astronomical units from the sun and is about 30% more massive than Pluto, despite being about the same size. That is, about two-thirds the diameter of our moon. Besides these two titans of the belt, there are at least four more smaller dwarf planets that reside in this region, each of which measure hundreds of miles across and are big enough to have their own satellites orbiting them. It is possible that there are dozens, even hundreds of more undiscovered dwarf planets residing in these far reaches of the solar system. But they are remarkably hard to discover to discover, given their extreme distance, and it's hard to know where to look for them. Now, with all this stuff that's out there, what has been done to actually explore it? Well, the Voyager and Pioneer probes that launched back in the 1970s all passed through the belt on their way out of the solar system, but none of these probes actively examined any objects in the belt itself and were more focused on either studying the outer planets or getting out of the solar system and into inter interstellar space entirely. I could honestly make an entire video on the edge of the solar system and how we managed to get there, but that is not the topic right now. Rather, let's focus on a probe that was launched more recently with the intent to actually study the belt, New Horizons. This craft launched in 2006 and in July of 2015, it made a flyby of Pluto for the first time ever, collecting some of the clearest photos and data of Pluto we've ever seen. Then, in 2019, New Horizons flew by a Kuiper Belt object known as Aroka, which collected even more valuable data on the Kuiper Belt as a whole, as well as revealed that this thing is basically a space snowman. There is potential for New Horizons to make another flyby on the very outer edge of the belt in the late 2020s, but the chances of this happening are slim. In the meantime, there are concepts for missions to study other dwarf planets in the Kuiper Belt that New Horizons couldn't reach. And that's all I have to say about the Kuiper Belt for today. As always, I would appreciate if you would like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Thanks, and have a great rest of your day.